these are just precautionary measures. Um, we don't want to start a panic. Pan in 1997, two movies about volcanic eruptions were released within months of each other. You could say one was a spoiler for the other, or that there was some underhanded industrial espionage going on, or that it was a massive coincidence. Either way, decades later, we have two late 90s popcorn flicks full of special effects of people being buried, scorched, melted, burned alive, and otherwise badly singed, and curiously lacking any eyebrows. We're at level one here. Dante's Peak and Volcano. Nice little town. Yeah, just like Pompeii. Volcanoes are relatively common across the planet, but in many populated areas, they're mostly, but not always, dormant. Dormant doesn't mean extinct, and occasionally they can awaken. The results for anyone nearby, well, they're not good, unless you've got a thing for pumice and are both lucky and patient. Bingo. If this mound's gonna rock and roll, we're gonna know about it. Unlike floods or major fires or earthquakes or destructive storms, the idea of a volcano exploding near you for a large chunk of people on the planet is a relatively abstract concept. You're as likely to be near an eruption as you are seeing Klingons getting a Costco membership. Oh, no. Volcano and Dante's Peak are two movies that I basically completely skipped until now. So it's gonna be interesting to see how a noob relates to these films compared to the general critical consensus. Dante's Peak landed in theatres first in February of 1997. It's directed by Roger Donaldson, an Aussie Kiwi director with a solid track record of films in various genres. Dr. Dalton's a geologist. A volcanologist, actually. You mean like Dr. Spock? Mr. Spock. Dante's Peak starts with volcanologist Harry Dalton losing his fiancée in a volcanic eruption. A few years later, he's been asked to check out some readings in a picturesque small town in Washington State called Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. This is a joke, right? Dante's Peak? Which actually sounds quite disturbing if you know the works of the Italian poet Dante. Unless, of course, the title is some Hollywood in-joke about the film Gremlins. The mayor of the town is single mom of two, Rachel, who, of course, hits it off with Harry. There are small signs that something's amiss, like dead trees and animals. Oh, and uh, two horribly scorched corpses in a hot spring that's turned acidic. Harry thinks it's time the town looked at its evacuation plans. Consider alerting the town to the possibility of an evacuation. Dante's Peak has just won an award as the second best place to live in the US. What was number one? I don't know, some piece of crap town out in Montana. Who cares? The volcano erupting and destroying the town would probably make getting to number one next year highly unlikely, but not impossible. We've been proud of our town for a long time. It's beautiful, it's safe. It's a wonderful place in which to raise a family. Dante's Peak is a nice place. It has hot springs, hot and hot running water, lots of fishing. It's a great tourist spot. Just so long as you can ignore the incredibly strong smell of sulfur. Yeah, Ugh, sulfur dioxide. But maybe James Bond and Sarah Connor can team up to sort it out. Harry's team turns up with his boss, Paul, who immediately begins to downplay the potential for disaster, citing how bad things could be if they were wrong. Of course, Harry's right, because a film about a volcano not erupting would be about as much fun as a prequel to the day the Earth stood still called A Week Where Pretty Much Nothing of Note Occurs. The volcano, of course, does erupt, and there's not much else to do but escape. And of course, that's where the fun is in these movies. Harry and Rachel have to get out of town alive. The road's gone. God. But also grab her kids, who've also taken a car to go and fetch their intransigent grandma from up the mountain. And then suddenly, we have lava. So the rest of the film is Harry and his new extended family crossing an acid lake in a boat that's melting, driving across flaming ground, stopping for a bit of equipment in the evacuated town. What do we need this for? It just come in handy. And then driving into a mine, where hopefully they can ride out things until they're found. Of course, the equipment they salvaged was an experimental distress signal, which is a massive stroke of luck that they just happen to have that on hand. But that's the film. Did you really mean what you said about taking us fishing? Sure did. That's great. The film came out and did okay at the box office. It was not a smash hit, but a solid performer that just happened to be released at the same time as the Star Wars Special Editions. So it's a middling success based on cinema release alone. But how is it? Reviews at the time were not overly positive. There was praise heaped on the special effects, which are mostly very good. But the people part of the movie was not liked. 
The effects are very good and are a mix of practical effects, model shots and some CG. Most of the time it looks very good, it's held up very well. With the possible exception of the lava effects, which were serviceable, they stand out more obviously as a special effect more so than other aspects of the film. I found the actual drama part was done mostly very well. Pierce Brosnan and Linda Hamilton were an engaging pair of leads, but the downside is that they have no major characters to play off of, no moustache twirling villain, other than some people with doubts. The child actors were thankfully less annoying than could have been the case, and there are more than just a few moments where there are some conveniences. But on the whole, I just enjoyed Dante's Peak a lot more than I was expecting. Dante's Peak is not flashy or loud for the sake of being loud. Yes, we have many moments of incredulity, but it's credible incredulity rather than incredible incredulity. Dante's Peak, the fictional mountain, was set in Washington State. Some scenes were filmed in Washington State and in California, while the bulk of the movie was filmed in Idaho, which is credible. Disaster movies and death are inextricably linked. A disaster movie where everyone survives is less a disaster movie and more a close call. Oh gee, that could have been a sticky situation. In Dante's Peak, there are two types of deaths. There are the group shots where you don't see people dying, but you can obviously tell there have been many casualties, such as when the roads collapse. And then there are the judgmental deaths. There's nothing going on then. There's nothing going on here now. Most disaster movies will have people who will downplay the potential danger in the first act. In Dante's Peak, there are townspeople who worry about the economic implications, Rachel's former mother-in-law who doesn't think there's any danger, and Harry's boss doesn't want to pull the trigger on emergency measures on the off chance that they're wrong. Guess what? All of these people are shown to die on screen. The weird thing is, in Dante's Peak, none of them were particularly malicious about anything. They're just proven to be wrong. In some cases, they even copped to being wrong. For whatever it's worth, you were right and I was wrong. But the film still punishes them. In a disaster movie with no obvious antagonists, you have to off someone for some drama, so it might as well be the naysayers. Where was Paul? He didn't make it. Dante's Peak mostly keeps it relatively believable, and the filmmakers seem to have made an effort to pay attention to how volcanic eruptions actually work. Thank you for coming on short notice, but could you save the fight for later? Yeah, sure. Two o'clock good for you? Just two months later came Volcano, where there's another natural disaster in Los Angeles, and it's a volcano. It's dangerous, it's expensive, yeah. it's yeah. Mike Rourke heads up LA's Office of Emergency Management. He's a divorced dad, naturally, while geologist slash seismologist Amy Barnes investigates some unusual readings. Something underground burns to death several workers and it looks like LA is not going to have just earthquakes to worry about, but some form of ooh, lava. Starting underneath LA's famed La Brea tar pits, lava rises to the surface and engulfs Wilshire Boulevard. I know this sounds crazy, but it almost looks like, like lava. Mike leads an operation to try and stop the lava flow from engulfing nearby homes. Amy is convinced that they've yet to see the worst a volcano can do to the city. Amy and Mike flirt with each other while investigating further, which is known as influstigating. They realise the lava ain't done, so the film pivots to driving the lava towards water, where it hopefully will miss any hospitals, and also the makeshift triage centre where Mike's daughter was helping out Dr. Jay Calder, whose property developer husband is miffed that she's not clocking off in the middle of a disaster. He wants to get home and watch Northern Exposure reruns. Norman Calder's latest project, a nearly completed tower, just happens to be in the wrong place at the right time. Hey, it's gotta be 50,000 tonnes of steel and concrete. Would that work? You are gonna knock a building down. Yes, I am. Will it work? There's the rush to blow up the building and make a lava dam and hopefully drive it into the ocean where it will likely cool into a rock. Which sounds okay, unless you happen to be surfing at the time, in which case that would be a total bummer, dude! The demolition almost takes out Mike's daughter and a kid, so there's Mike's big action hero moment of running while explosives are going off all around him. It is coming back around, it's obviously got this door, we are dealing with very determined stuff here. Volcano is Tommy Lee Jones and Anne Hesh's movie, where they do the job well enough. There's also Don Cheadle, Keith David, John Corbett, a few others you may know from other places. But at no point does Susie Essman ever say, you sick fuck Larry David. Volcano is about spectacle. I mean, if we're really honest with each other, we're here to see some dang lava. Walls of hot, molten, slow moving, fast moving, burning lava, smelling like a wall of expired egg salad. Oh! Volcano is much bigger in scope than that other Volcano movie of 1997, because it's got a lot of people running around covered in fake ash, reacting to a lot more CG lava, oh, shit. 
It has people improvising major demolition projects, and it's all relatively grounded until the big action film finale where Mike and the kids are buried but pulled out of the wreckage just as the ocean cools the lava. And of course, that's when it decides to rain in Los Angeles, which could have worked as a segue into a sequel film about a flood in Los Angeles. When it hits the block, it's gonna punch through. You mean it rocks? Yeah! The effects in Volcano are big, but also conversely haven't held up as well as Dante's Peak, where they do look aggressively fake. Much like Uncle Reg's denials that his new boutique vodka had anything to do with his failed investment in methylated spirits. The practical side of the effects look much better, particularly when the production built a scale replica of part of Wheelchair Boulevard that takes up so much of the film. This Hieronymus Bosch is heavy. That's because he deals with man's inclination towards sin in defiance of God's will. I didn't mean it like that. Director Mick Jackson had a varied career with films like LA Story and The Bodyguard. But back in his native Britain, Mick Jackson had been a TV director for a long time, where at one point he eliminated sleep from a generation of viewers with his apocalyptic television film, Threads. Volcano would be Mick Jackson's last big Hollywood movie. History does not record whether Jackson did the moonwalk at some point. Are you guys seeing this shit? Unlike Dante's Peak, where the movie concentrates on somebody's death, it's either a random innocent person or somebody making a heroic sacrifice. Lava, of course, does not care if you donated to charity or embezzled from charity, which I guess is cool because I was worried which way that would go. Damn. I mean, there are deaths by burning, crushing, falling into a bottomless pit, lots of explosions, and people melting in lava. I mean, really well done deaths. Shit. Volcano remains fairly believable, but gradually ratchets up the stupid. By the time the building is being demolished and his daughter's there, and it just forgets about trying to make all that much sense. It just goes with the idea that if you've already paid for a ticket to see the film, then you're more likely to see it through to the end. So what are you blaming me for? Convenience, okay? For a movie called Volcano, there almost isn't an actual volcano. But calling the film Vent or Fisher may have been accurate, but also might have looked a little underwhelming on a movie poster. So the film squeaks in an actual volcano in Los Angeles at the very end. Maybe it's just me, but sometimes in these movies, the lava looks delicious. It's like melt in your mouth delicious hot sauce. Note to viewers, it is not hot sauce. It will melt in your mouth. And your mouth. And everything else. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Volcanoes have always had a weird place in movies. If you live near one, they're scary because they could destroy your town. For everyone else, they're just far enough away that you can enjoy the destruction. When I was quite young, I saw an exhibition of the plaster casts of the remains of people from the town of Pompeii. Needless to say, that screwed me up for a week. However, in these two movies, the deaths shown on screen are relatively few, and they're not super scary films. Unless, of course, you live in the shadow of a rumbling volcano and your home insurance policy has 500 pages of exclusions. So if you only saw one movie about a volcanic eruption released in 1997, which would it be, Dante's Peak or Volcano? I think the answer would be different for everyone. For me, it would easily be Dante's Peak. It didn't feel all that stupid and held my interest for the most part. Volcano was all right, but it's really just all right. It goes much bigger in terms of its visuals, but its characters aren't all that interesting, and in general, it feels a little more by the numbers. A cul-de-sac. That's gotta be a wall at least six feet high. Which of these do you prefer? Or would you rather something else? Maybe something more geographically challenged, like Krakatoa, east of Java. Or a sequel to Joe vs. the Volcano, where Joe and the Volcano team up to fight a tidal wave. It is unlikely, but it is a possibility. If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below or check out some of our other videos.